for years, I was a solo traveler and digital nomad, moving around the world and maintaining a life balance that worked perfectly for me. But then I found Mila. And needless to say, she flipped my world upside down. And after a year on the road with her, we have learned a lot. Today, I wanna to share three challenges we faced traveling full time together and how we've overcome them. First challenge is finding the right accommodation. If you don't know what you're looking for, finding pet friendly accommodation can be a nightmare. One mistake I made early on with Mila was booking us for a long-term stay in a hotel. You see, at the time, I didn't realize how important it was for her to have a lot of outdoor space. And the place we were staying at just didn't have a big enough garden for Mila to run free, causing her to need a lot of extra attention. So I took that as a lesson, and from then on, I always booked places that had great outdoor spaces for Mila to move around independently. There's no one-size-fits-all solution when finding a place to stay with your pet. But I think the best thing you can do is understand your pet's preferences. For example, Mila needs some outdoor space, but she's not super sensitive to people or animals or noise. She doesn't require a lot of indoor space either. So a small room or a small apartment in a shared space works perfectly for us. And to physically find a place, I usually use booking.com or Airbnb. Both of those services offer pet friendly filter, so I know the options that are available to us pretty easily. But be prepared to pay a little bit more. Most hotels have a pet fee of 10 to $25 a night, depending on where you're staying and how long. And then I've seen Airbnbs have pet fees anywhere from like 20 to $100, depending on how long you're staying. The second challenge we face is managing the stress that full time travel can bring to an animal. I've had Mila since she was 10 days old. We made her first move when she was 14 days old. She's been on four flights, countless buses, taxis. I think we've moved about 15 times since I've had her. So she's pretty accustomed to the travel life. But there's certain things I do to make sure that her life stays consistent and help her manage her stress regardless of where we are. The first thing I do is make sure that she consistently has access to nutritionally balanced food. I just made an entire video on this, so I'm not going to deep dive the topic today. And I do believe by her having access to high quality food, it helps keep her healthy and keep her stress levels down. There are toys that I bring with us everywhere. I make sure that she always has her tunnels. These are great because they're super collapsible. <laughs> Another one I always have is her ball table with the scratcher in it. And then her hammock comes with us everywhere as well. Having these things on hand full time is absolutely crucial for Mila. Anytime we get to a new space, the first thing I do is unpack her toys. It helps her settle in a little bit quicker and gets her more comfortable with the new space. Another thing I'll do to help manage Mila's stress is to make sure that she's up to date on her internal parasite, her flea and tick medications, and her vaccinations. Since we move cities a lot, we also have to change vets quite a bit. So one thing I've done in the past is bought her medication from a vet that I trust in bulk. And that way I've got three or six months worth of her internal parasite and her flame tick medication. So I don't have to like go out and find the medications in different cities. And over the last year, that seems to have worked for us pretty well. And the biggest tip I can give for managing your pet's stress on the road is be super sensitive and just in tune with what they're feeling. Some new cities we arrive to, Mila jumps out of her bag, she's sniffing around, she's at home instantly. Other places, she's not so excited about being there. She'll hide in her bag or hide in the bathroom for a few hours and come out. Both of those situations are okay. And I just kind of make sure to support her and whatever she's feeling. The third challenge we faced is finding a good vet in all these different cities. It really messed up when we first moved to Medellin and I chose a bad veterinarian for her. I took some advice from someone instead of following my own instincts, ended up getting her spayed there and the vet did an absolute hack job. I think it traumatized her and I'll never forgive myself. So from then on, I decided not to compromise and to only stick to my standards when choosing a vet for Mila. First, the vet has to speak English. We live in different cities where people speak different languages and that's great. But when it comes to something medical, I need to be able to communicate my first language. Otherwise I can't really get my point across. So having a vet that speaks English is a non-negotiable. Two, they have to have a clean, comfortable location in a good part of town. I know this sounds crazy, but I don't want to walk into a vet's office and have it overwhelmingly smell like animals. I want to know that someone's cleaning that place one, two, three times a day. I need the exam rooms to be sparkling clean, and I want it to be a comfortable space for Mila in an inherently uncomfortable situation. And lastly, I have to get just a good vibe from the vet. I want to know they're really compassionate about their job, their understanding of our situation, and that they truly care for animals, and this isn't just a job for them. I know this probably feels like a little bit extra and I'm setting the bar pretty high, 
but Mila's health is my top priority. And I've been able to find vets that meet these standards time and time again. It does not mean that they are the cheapest vet in town, that's for sure. But for Mila's health, there's no amount of money that's not worth it. So those are three challenges we face as full-time travelers and how we've overcome them. Have you ever traveled with your pet? How'd it go? Let me know in the comments. And remember, if you're living this unique lifestyle or traveling with a pet, you're gonna mess up. After all, we're only human. We're not perfect. We're not our cats. <laughs> okay guys, that's all for this time. Thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you soon. Say bye Mila. Are you dismounting? <laughs> Should you? There we go.